Hello, my watchers and subscribers. This is Believe in Shadows here, and oh my goodness, I haven't really been very active lately, but I just popped onto my YouTube channel to check things out, see what's going on, and I noticed that my How I Use MS Paint video has over 2,000 views. Oh my god, guys, and it has over 100 likes. You guys have been smashing the like, up, like button, you guys have been commenting. <clears throat> left and right, you guys are so amazing, some of you have been asking for more, like, tutorial videos and stuff, so, that's what we got here today. I do apologize if the audio sounds really bad, I still don't have a very good recording system, and I have what I think to be some kind of a cold starting up, so, I'll try not to clear my throat too much in this video. As you can see right here, I've made the sketch already. And I'm laying in the colors, kind of the basics. I've made the canvas in this video much bigger than the one in, than the painting I did in the last video. And that's because I wanted to show just how much more control you can have and how much more detail you can have um, if you do so. Like, if you make the canvas bigger, you can do so much more with it because... You can add finer details and stuff. So I'm kind of just blocking things in right now. Nothing too special. And as you can see, I didn't like the body there, so I just kind of got rid of it. Um, basically, you want to make sure um, when you're working on this is to have a big canvas. And the best thing to use when painting in this style is the crayon tool and the pencil tool and the eyedropper. I don't think I was clear enough in the last one because a lot of people were asking me how I did the shading and the blending and everything. How I do it is I block things in, all the big main spaces, with, a, with, with the crayon tool and the main colors that I need. And then I use the pencil tool to smooth things out because it's much softer. Um, and to get my colors, instead of going in and, you know, going into the, um, like, custom colors thing and choosing all the different shades I want, what I do is I use the eyedropper to kind of select the area in between the two colors that I've just laid down, if that makes sense. Like, I'm... Um, Continuously selecting a mixture of the colors that I've laid down until things smooth out. It's a really hard thing to like explain in words, I think. Um, if it's still a little unclear, I can make like a like one minute video um, later on explaining just the, the very solid basics of how that works. Um, but yeah, uh, it's... It's a much better technique, I find, than, you know, picking out all of your shades um, manually uh, because you can get a much accurate, you can get a much accurate color to what you want. Like, you can get exactly what you want immediately. And that way, also, you don't get rid of the custom colors that you already had that you need. You know, if you fill up that little bar of colors and, well, you're up the creek without a paddle if you need your original colors again. So in the video itself now, I'm starting to get into detail a little bit. Um, I'm not super good at explaining how I, you know, shade uh, like anatomy wise and everything. Um, the best thing I can say for that is to, one, do research, you know, study things. And another good thing is to think in your mind, how I do it at least, is to picture what you're drawing and kind of think of what you're drawing in kind of a 3D kind of way. Like, how is the light going to hit that item or that creature? What's going to be in shadow and what's going to not? Like, how does that shape look? And that's the best way I can describe how to shade things like I do. And um, a lot of people also were asking about how I do fur. And, well, you can see here I do fur. I derped up a little bit on the video, and I totally, 
totally missed some of the recording for when I first was like laying in like the basic shapes of the fur. Um, but really all you're doing is just drawing like those little wavy triangle shapes um, in a darker color and then you're just it's it's kind of like um, um hard to explain you're really just making it look like they're laying on top of each other like hmm it depends too on like the style you're going for and this is they're very like big clumps of fur for this style, kind of just think like they're just a bunch of like things laying on top of each other and just with shading, push things back and bring things forward. Like the ends of the fur are much lighter and then the top parts of the little tufts of fur are much darker and when you do that it just kind of defines things more. Um, I also have improved myself since the last tutorial I made and you can see too I've added in a lot more um, shading and detail and different tones of colors and different colors themselves um, in shading the fur and stuff you'll you'll see too I'll be adding another color to the fur in just a little bit I decided to keep it more of this orangey tone um, because in the last video I went for a grayscale to kind of just show like the basics and whatever, but I felt like this would be another good color to have people be able to see what's going on. It's not too blinding. Um, but yeah, it's not too much different from the last tutorial I made, but with this one, you can just, you can tell the difference it makes in, you know, just practicing and taking your time and just adding in little details. The more little details you try and add, the better things turn out. And just really take your time. That's something this style of drawing really takes a lot of time to do, um, especially with MS Paint, because you don't have all those like little shortcuts and such. So anyway, mm done here with the drawing. If you enjoyed it and you enjoyed this little, it's not really a tutorial, but kind of it is. If you enjoyed it, give me a like on the video. Give me some feedback. Tell me some specifics on what you'd like to see. If you'd like individual, like, slow down tutorials on specific things like, um, like maybe the eyes or the nose or different styles of how I do the fur, um, but let me know. Um, also, I'd like to give a real quick shout out to a few of my fans. You guys have been super amazing and supportive in the fact that I haven't been around. Um, I had to refund a couple of commissions because they were just taking so long to do and I've been so stressed like in the real world. I appreciate those people so much for either being really supportive and just letting me keep the points that they gave me and you know, trusting me that when I can, I'll get to it, not caring how long it takes. And then also the people that I did pay back, you know, totally understanding and being okay. And also saying that they would totally commission me in the future once I get back on my feet. Um, also, a shout out to um, one person. I'm not going to name them just because I don't know if they would like it if I named them. But they are super amazing. Is someone on Warrior Cats Amino that I commissioned actually um, to draw shadow uh, it was like a twenty dollar commission, and my PayPal ha is been empty, and for some reason it won't let me add money to my account, and it's it's been weeks, and they've just been so kind and understanding, um, you know, and just me trying to figure out you know, get payment to them and everything, so that's been super great. And I absolutely have to thank every single one of you guys for the amazing feedback I've been getting lately. My content has been exploding, it, at least in comparison to what it used to be, and oh my god, I just just got past 200 subscribers on YouTube. I'm almost at 700 followers on Warrior Cats Amino. 
my god, you guys, you're so amazing. I'm going to post some links down in the description to my Warrior Cats Amino and to my DeviantArt. And if I can, I'll post something to my Equestria Amino because I post there on occasion. But anyway, thank you so much, everybody. And I hope you all have a wonderful day.